Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Digging out and preparing for more. After Metro Detroit's first major snowstorm of the season, we are monitoring the cleanup in your neighborhoods. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining me. I'm Christy McDonald. We will have a live report on that in just a moment, but we want to begin with forewarned meteorologist Ashley Barrissey. She is tracking more snow over the next few days. Hi, <laughs> Ashley. As if we didn't get enough yesterday, right. Christy. We're just going to keep adding to those totals. And now, at least over the next 48 hours or so, it won't be as significant as what we had for that Wednesday winter storm. However, heading into your late Saturday, early Sunday, we could have a few more inches on top of the snowpack. But let's first recap what we had through late yesterday night. So Ann Arbor just shy of eight inches, though Manchester got just above eight inches of snow. Royal Oak seven and a half Shelby Township right around seven same in Ypsilanti over at Metro Airport six and a half inches and five inches in Howell. As we look at our weather impacts over the next few days, today's on the low end, but we will have a few lake effect flurries going into the afternoon, which could maybe amount to a little light dusting, creating some slick spots on elevated surfaces, but a moderate threat for your Friday and Saturday. That's because come Friday afternoon, we're tracking the chance for maybe about an inch of accumulation of a bigger system that's a little more widespread that rolls through and then Saturday afternoon into Sunday. This one will have quite a few inches of snow falling on the ground. Right now, though, we sit right around the freezing mark, but we're going to time out that snow for you in your full forecast. Of course, you can always take our weather on the road with you, including our radar. It's one of the best apps that you can download. Truthfully, it's faster, easier, accurate, and has our future cast. Forewarned weather app. Make sure you download it in your app today. Good, Ashley. We'll see you in a bit. Well, if you're heading out this afternoon, most of the main roads have been cleared, but some neighborhoods, well, they could be a different story. Our Sean Lay is live on Detroit's west side. And Sean, how are the crews making progress? I want to give everyone a live look. We're focusing on the neighborhoods, but look, can you see the snow right now? Ashley says it, and then we can see it and feel it just as she says it here on the west side. It's snowing. Check it out. Main roads were hit first by uh, Detroit Public Works. Absolutely clear as a bell here, seven mile. A man, a neighbor here just walked by and he said, remember when side streets were never plowed? Well, check this out. We have really logged the miles today on the west side and so far so clear. Clearing city roads after the storm. We're checking on the city of Detroit's progress and promises to plow main roads and side streets after our first heavy snowfall so far this winter. Here is the challenge for the city of Detroit Public Works Department. The city has 673 miles of major thoroughfares to plow. This is seven mile on the city's west side. As you can see, it's looking good just hours after the final flakes fell. Main roads first. Side streets have been getting attention since midnight. Here, the city has 1,884 miles of residential streets to plow. And on the west side, that challenge has been met. Main roads are clear. We checked on miles of residential streets, and so far, so good and so clear. 50 DPW trucks hit the main roads and then contracted plows. They have 24 hours from start time to complete the plowing on the side streets that they are responsible for. All right, back here live. Here's a Jeep coming through. There were times, guys, where it was such a hardship on neighbors because there would be a foot of snow, wouldn't get touched. It looks like those days are over, Christy. Here on the west side, really looking good. I just got an update from the city. We're going to meet them on the east side about mid-afternoon, so we'll have another update from the east side coming up. Back to you. Sounds good, Sean. Yeah, everyone's got to get back out to work today. Thanks so much. We'll see you a little bit later. Yes. An update now on the ongoing legal battle over a Van Gogh painting at the DIA. An appeals court has just ordered the Detroit Institute of Arts to hold onto the painting known as the novel reader or the reading lady. A Brazilian art collector sued the DIA claiming the painting belongs to him. Last week, a judge ruled the painting could not be seized because it was protected by federal law. The Van Gogh exhibition at the DIA ended over the weekend. Some big football news in Detroit this noon. The USFL will play games here again for the first time in nearly four decades. The Michigan Panthers will use Ford Field as their home base, and so will the Philadelphia team, the Stars. All of the USFL teams played out of one venue in Alabama last year. Mayor Mike Duggan says this is great news for a football city. Detroit football fans 
were not ready for this season to be over. Uh, the way the Lions were going at the end with that turnaround, uh, we wanted more. And now we are going to have football this April right back in the city uh, here at Ford Field. Yeah, Detroit is one of the best sports towns in the country. The Panthers kick off their season on April 30th, but the full schedule has not been announced just yet. A major employer in Michigan is slashing jobs. Dow announced it will cut 2,000 jobs. It's about 5% of its global workforce. The material science company says it's trying to cut $1 billion in costs this year. Midland-based company employs nearly 38 thousand people. And we are getting another look at the economy this afternoon. A new report finds it grew faster than expected late last year, but there are still fears over a mild recession. The Commerce Department reports the gross domestic product increased 2.9 percent in the fourth quarter, and that's more than the 2.6 percent that experts were predicting. Investors don't think it will change anything, though. When the Federal Reserve meets, they are expected to hike interest rates another quarter point next week. Right now, the FDA's vaccine advisory panel is meeting to debate the future of our nation's COVID vaccine strategy. The central issue that they're considering is should we move toward treating COVID vaccines more like flu shots? The FDA has proposed updating the vaccine each June to include the COVID strains that are most likely to circulate around and offering an annual booster each fall. We've needed to adjust our approach over time. And we're now in a reasonable place to reflect on the development of the COVID-19 vaccines to date to see if we can simplify the approach to vaccination in order to facilitate the process of optimally vaccinating and protecting the entire population moving forward. Now a lot of debate is expected over whether all Americans need an annual booster and whether the original strain of COVID should be even included in the vaccine at this point. The panel is scheduled to meet until 5.30 and you can see the highlights of their discussion and what they ultimately recommend tonight on Local 4 News at 5 and 6 o'clock. Well, Russia launches dozens of missiles at Ukraine one day after the U.S. pledged to send in tanks. This latest attack killed 11 people and hurt 11 others. In the capital of Kyiv, crowds of people took cover in underground metro stations. And as Susan McGinnis reports, the Kremlin has warned the West that supplying tanks would be a dangerous escalation of the conflict. Overnight, Russia bombards Ukraine with dozens of missiles. It is seemingly a response to the U.S. decision to send dozens of tanks to Ukraine. This group is made up of some 50 President nations. Biden announcing the U.S. will send 31 advanced M1 Abram tanks to Ukraine to help it defend itself and regain territory taken by Russia. Putin expected Europe and the United States to weaken our resolve. He expected our support for Ukraine to crumble with time. He was wrong. After resisting the move for months, the U.S. now sending a clear message to Russia and the world. The U.S. and NATO allies remain unified in support for Ukraine. This is a big day in Kyiv, a bad day in Moscow. The decision made in lockstep with Germany. Berlin announcing it's sending 14 of its own Leopard 2 tanks, a wave of help from the U.K., Poland and other allies expected to follow. Members of Congress appearing on board. I hope and expect that Germany and other Europe European countries with tanks in their inventory will move expeditiously to send them to Ukraine. To those who want to pull the plug on Ukraine, you'll live to regret it. The U.S. treading a fine line, helping Ukraine, but careful not to provoke a nuclear-powered Russia. It is not an offensive threat to Russia. Russia saying Wednesday any Abrams tanks coming from the U.S. will, quote, burn. Yet. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky expressing gratitude, hopeful the effort will turn the tide of the war, which is expected to escalate in the spring. U.S. tanks are not expected to reach Ukraine's battlefields for several months, but the Pentagon says it will start training Ukraine troops on the new equipment soon. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, NBC News. All right, thanks so much, Susan. And President Biden is considering a visit to Europe next month around the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion in Ukraine. Sources say multiple locations are under consideration, including Poland. Well, still to come here at noon, what contributed to that major Southwest Airlines meltdown last month? The Department of Justice thinks it may have an idea. Could be bad news for the airline. And the trial is officially underway for the disgraced South Carolina lawyer accused of murdering his wife and son. Prosecutors lay out their case against Alex Murdoch next.